Hi everyone, welcome to video 7 in this series, An Introduction to Land Administration. In this video, Chepel, Rosalie and I will be taking you through land administration as a component of a land administration system. We'll also be looking at the functions of land administration and what is required for responsible land administration. Welcome to the third video in the session on land administration as a system. I'm Tsepo Fokani from the Alliance for Rural Democracy. And in this video, we will be discussing the role of admin land administration within the land administration system. In the previous session, we saw that together with the policy and management level, there must be a level of implementation, which is the action level. That is what we call land administration. Land administration is not static. The way that land administration is understood and constituted reflects the balance of forces in a country's political system at a particular junction. Definitions are thus likely to change according to the context, and it's important to bear in mind that the concept of land administration originally came into being when the management of land and its resources became increasingly complex in Western market economies. Acquiring and disposing of land became linked to land markets, which the state wanted to manage and regulate, as well as raise revenue from transactions. The state's motivation for keeping track of land was for taxation purposes, initially from ownership, um, but later then from transactions. Thus, a definition that suited the context saw land administration as the process of recording and sharing information about the ownership, value, and use of land and its associated resources. Over time, it then developed into broader concerns such as um, recording land ownership and protecting land tenure and property rights, spatial planning to manage urban growth and land use management. Markets, urbanization and environmental changes thus broadened the scope of land administration. In some post-colonial societies, where not all land is traded by the market, the idea of land administration is adapting to take into account a wider range of scenarios that include recognizing rights that are granted in law but may not be registered or even fully recognized. Some of these contexts may not first and foremost involve markets and private ownership but are more to do with regulating access to resources in the face of rising human densities and competition for land. In the context of the climate crisis, land governance is increasingly concerned with sustainable use of resources. These contemporary concerns have led to increasing reliance on planning mechanism and processes. Countries affected by colonization must also contend with legal pluralism, where there's multiple and sometimes parallel institutions with the different norms, customs, and laws to regulate land which translates into different standards and processes for land management and land administration. Land administration must be designed to respond to these extra demands. Under these circumstances, it's crucial that land administration is well-coordinated, aligned, and integrated. The component parts need to articulate with each other to avoid pulling in contradictory directions. In this series, we understand land administration in the way we defined it in the introduction Namely, it's the process of determining, recording, and disseminating information about the relationship between people and land. This definition again emphasizes land administration as a process rather than a technical once-off um, event. However, we take it one step further by de-emphasizing ownership as the basis of land administration as it was done in the past. In order to grasp the co-prevalence of registered and unregistered rights, it's important to understand that land tenure and administration are arising from relations between people regarding land. That shows a shift in thinking from the idea of thinking about owning a thing to the idea that land rights involve relationships between people about a thing. Furthermore, it involves multiple layers of processes, procedures, steps, and actions. Clearly, a common denominator that is central to any understanding of um, land administration is land information and how that is recorded and published. Land information systems are therefore seen as the foundation of any land administration system. Hi, I'm Dr. Rosalie Kingwa, 
Now I'd like to give you a closer look at the functions of land administration. We mentioned some of these broad functions in a previous video when we discussed them as pillars of a house or as a part of a pyramid. In this video, we want to elaborate on these functions. In their recent book on the cadaster, which we've quoted from quite a bit, Fisher and Whittall discuss the importance of land administration in supporting land governance as a whole. I quote, when a land administration system operates in an integrated and efficient manner, it supports many core functions of land governance. These include land tenure security, income generation through property taxation, control and planning of development, preservation and sustainability of the natural environment, and the protection and maintenance of cultural artifacts. We can group these core functions in four categories. Land tenure, land value, land use, and land development. We should re remember the importance of conflict resolution as integral to all of these functions. In the table on the slide, we expand on the content and types of activities associated with, with each of these four functions. Under land tenure, the core activities are the following. Securing access to land, determining plot boundaries, allocating new plots or altering existing plot boundaries, transferring property or use, managing disputes regarding land rights and plot boundaries. Under land value, the main activities are assessing the value of land and properties, calculating and gathering revenue through taxation of property, managing disputes related to land valuation and taxation. Under land use, the main activities are adopting planning policies and land use regulations, enforcing of land use regulations, managing disputes related to land use. And under land development, the key activities are building new physical infrastructure and utilities, implementing construction planning, expropriation of land, changing land use through planning permissions and building permits. When land administration institu institutions are weak, and when there's also on top of that legal pluralism, the processes and structures of land administration become very complicated. Sometimes they are overlapping and they can become even chaotic. In these circumstances, conflicts or contestation of authority tend to be prevalent. When land administration institutions are weak or ineffective, people turn to the courts. However, the judiciary should be the last resort for conflict resolution. Conflict should first and foremost be prevented or at least anticipated by having clear adjudication mechanisms to investigate rights and claims. Secondly, if conflicts do emerge, they should be managed by land administration institutions. Conflict resolution procedures should be embedded in land administration processes to provide authoritative means to solve or adjudicate the conflicting claims or contestations administratively. In fact, when land administration institutions are strong and legitimate, conflicts decrease. Land administration institutions are supposed to enact the country's policies and strategies, and these should include adjudication and conflict resolution institutions. The judiciary is there as the institution of last resort to adjudicate disputes judicially. So one of the purposes of land administration is to mediate rights and claims and thus decrease conflict 
and at the same time comply with principles set out in the Constitution, in policies, in national plans, in laws, and so on. The functions of land administration are not only undertaken by government or officials. In South Africa, land professionals in the private sector play a big role in land administration in concert with government. They are regulated by government statute. For example, land surveyors, lawyers, especially conveyancing lawyers, planners, valuers, economists, and developers all play pivotal roles in land administration. The four functions of land administration that we discussed earlier are interrelated and should therefore be carried out as part of an integrated land administration system to achieve sustainable development. The various land professionals and professionals should therefore coordinate their work and share information and outputs. We will return to this topic in a later video when we discuss the vision for an integrated land administration system. It is important to realize that it is not only officials and professionals who are responsible for land administration or who practically perform land administration functions. When land administration is weak, civil society organizations tend to perform land administration functions sometimes combined with the state in hybrid arrangements. This often occurs, for example, in informal settlements. When a property owner or an occupier erects a fence to delimit the boundaries of a plot, he or she is doing land administration. When a chief allocates land in a communal area, he or she is doing land administration. When a family subdivides a parcel and allocates portions to children as inheritance, they are doing land administration. The functions of land administration are being carried out at multiple levels by multiple authorities on a daily basis. It is not only the government's responsibility. It is our responsibility. In recent decades, international NGOs have taken increasing interest in land administration as an offshoot of their concern with security of tenure for vulnerable people in the Global South. One of the major advocates for strengthening land governance for the poor is UN Habitat, based in Nairobi, Kenya. It established a specialized institution as its partner to champion the issues of land administration and tenure called the Global Land Tool Network, or GLTN. The GLTN has been very active in tackling issues of land administration in the Global South and has helped publicize the problems as areas of prominent concern in African countries. The GLTN regards the role of land administration as being to recognize and protect the legitimate land rights of all people. This has been an important intervention in Africa where land rights are subject to so much ambiguity as a result of the legacies of colonialism and the prevalence of legal pluralism. Protecting the legitimate rights of all people, according to the GLTN, involves provision of secure land tenure, certainty about the legal status of land rights, clear and accessible information on the ownership, value and use of land. The GLTN has hence proposed 13 principles of responsible land administration that should be embedded in national land policies. The first five concern recognition and respect for all people, regardless of gender, race, age, ethnicity, or any other quality. They are respect for human rights and dignity, non-discrimination, pro poor, equity and justice, gender responsiveness. The next five concern the way the rules and regulations making up land administration processes are derived. They should be holistic and sustainable based on effective consultation and participation subject to the rule of law, transparent and accountable. The last three concern sustainability. Responsible land administration requires continuous improvement, affordability of services and scalable approaches. 
We will touch on many of these principles in the videos to come. For now, the important points to remember are that by adhering to the principles of responsible governance, effective land administration can contribute to the achievement of many of the sustainable development goals. For example, Goal 1, Target 1.4, requires the release and publication of information on the proportion of the adult population with secure land rights and legally recognized documentation of such and of those who perceive their rights to land to be secure. With responsible land administration, this information should be available. In the three videos of this session, we looked at the components of land administration systems and how they work together as a whole. We discussed the broader structure with land policy at the top, followed by land management, strategic level, and land administration, the operational level. We discussed the functions of land administration as being land tenure, land value, land use, and land development, and also conflict resolution, and highlighted the need for responsible land administration to achieve land tenure security for all land rights holders. We also commented that land administration in the global south is often not the preserve of government, but of civil society as well. As a reminder, land policy is where governments make choices and the legislature enacts laws. Land management refers to the strategies decided to carry out these policies and laws. Land administration refers to the operational or implementation side of policies, laws, and strategies. In the structure of government, land administration is mainly undertaken by the executive sphere of government. However, in African countries, it is also performed by non-governmental organizations or civil society and by private sector bodies. Join us for session three, when we will discuss land governance, land information, land tenure, and land rights, and how these interact in the land administration system.